So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and download and install Git for Windows. So the first thing to do is to uh, go to the website git-scm.com. And then we wanna come over here and click on Downloads. And it should automatically detect that you're on Windows, but if not, just click over here to the Windows. And you've got an option here to choose either the 32-bit or the 64-bit version. And you can see in my case, the computer has automatically started downloading the 64-bit version. But if you're not actually sure whether you're running a 32 or a 64-bit version of Windows, here's how to find out. You're gonna right click your startup icon and click on Control Panel. And if that doesn't work on your version of Windows, just actually load up and it will go into Control Panel. Then you wanna find where it says System. In my case it's here, so find system on your version of Windows and click on system again. And that'll actually tell you whether you're running a 32 or 64-bit version of Windows. Now the bit we actually want is the 64-bit operating system here because you may still have a 64-bit processor but you may be running a 32-bit version of the operating system. So this is the important bit here, the what version of the operating system. In my case, I'm running a 64-bit uh, version, so the download in the bottom left-hand corner is correct. But uh, if for some reason you're running a 32-bit version of uh, Windows, you would actually download and install this 32-bit edition instead of the 64-bit edition. So now that we've done that, I'm going to start this, in my case, by just uh, clicking on the downloaded to file. So you may need to navigate to the folder where uh, it was downloaded if you can't click it in the uh, browser like I can. Click on yes. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, click on next. Now it's giving us the folder where Git's going to be installed. So I'm just gonna leave it on the default uh, folder. Click on next. We've got all these other options about creating icons and uh, so on and so forth. We're just gonna leave everything on the default options and click on next. And in terms of the name for the program shortcut, I'm also gonna click on, or leave the default there as well. Now, when we get to this option, there's actually three choices here. Now, I recommend the first option, which isn't the default, but it is the safest route. And uh, by doing this, we can actually avoid changing anything on the path. So I'm gonna actually come up here and click on use Git from Git Bash only. But uh, if you know what you're doing, you can certainly click on the second option to use Git from the Windows command prompt, or you can also use the third option. But again, there's a warning there to say that this will override uh, other tools. So the bottom line is these second and third options are really more advanced options, which you would generally leave out and not use, and use the default, th the first option, which is use Git from uh, Git Bash only. So I'm gonna click on next. So next we get uh, an option for the various types of checkouts here. Now you notice there's two options here. They're talking about uh, CRLF will be converted to LF. Well, CRLF really relates to how bytes are stored in a file. So CR is a byte code for carriage return and really sort of uh, harkers back or hard goes back to the days for typewriters and LF is for line feed. The, the, really, the only thing you really know, need to know about this is that CRLF is something that's really only used on Windows and Unix uses LF and the Mac uses CR. Now because we're on Windows, I suggest we use the option that's selected as default, which is checkout Windows style. So I'm gonna click on next. So we've got two options that come up at this point now for configuring the terminal emulator. I'm gonna suggest you use the default terminal, which is used as the, uh, which is the default on the screen. Noting that the other option is to use Windows default console window, but there's some good reasons to use this min TTY, which is the default terminal that uh, it comes with bash, because it gives us uh, some, some more advanced options to use if we decide to go along. We basically get a better way to access uh, Git from the command lines. So for that reason, I'm gonna suggest we use min TTY. Click on next. And this option here, enable file system caching and enable Git credential manager, I'm gonna leave those both as the defaults, and we can talk about those as required later on in the course. Once I've done that, I'm gonna click on Install. You can see it's now finished the installation, so I'm gonna click on Launch Git Bash, and I'm gonna just close, so I'll check the button to not view the release notes. Click on Finish. And you can see that uh, we've got our uh, prompt now, and we can actually just do a test here and type Git, space version, 
just to confirm that we've actually got it working. And you can see that it's come up and said Git version 2.10.1.windows.1. Bearing in mind, you may well get a different version when you download it because it's updated on a regular basis. All right, so I'm going to finish the video here now. We've actually successfully installed Git on Windows. So you can skip the next two videos because they relate to installing Git on a Mac. And then the video after that is for installing Git on a Linux platform. So if you've got no need to install it for those platforms, skip the next two videos and I'll see you in the video following that one.